Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Aces High. Uh, today, we're jumping back into Rome. I know I missed a day. Honest to God, that was the first time that I have ever missed a day since I started this channel. Um, and I'm <laughs> not going to lie to you guys. I worked like a 13, 14 hour shift, something crazy like that. Um, I think it was actually like 12 hours and 45 minutes. But I got home. It was like 5 or 6 a.m. And I just, I was dead, did not want to film a video to upload at 8 a.m. So, my bad. That being said, today we're going to be watching uh, another one by Historia Civilis. It's, uh, it's called The Battle of the Axena. Axena? Uh, it's, 50, it's in 57 BC, so we're moving a little bit forward. We're really getting into those Caesar battles, so I'm actually stoked for this. Um, based off the picture, let me hop over here. It looks like uh, they're going to be fighting along a river, mostly. Uh, possibly from this area, maybe Caesar trying to take this area, or maybe it's reverse, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll just have to wait and uh, find out, but uh, hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, if you haven't subbed, hit that sub button, help me out, alright? Let's get started. During Julius Caesar's first winter as the governor of Cisalpine Gaul, Transalpine Gaul, and Illyricum, he returned to Roman territory to tend to his administrative duties, while his right-hand man, Labinus, wintered with the army in Gaul. During this time, Labinus kept Caesar updated with regular reports. Late in the winter, rumors started to circulate that the people in northeastern Gaul, the Belgae, were considering forming a loose confederation aligned against the Romans. Hmm. The Belgae were alarmed by the fact that the Romans were taking such an active role in Gallic affairs. Moreover, the Romans appeared to be making themselves comfortable in Gaul by wintering there in a semi-permanent camp. By the way, the Belgae were right to be alarmed. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I think they mentioned in the last video, uh, he used, I guess, kind of came in under cover of, hey, we're going to protect you from these other people, the what hell Betty, and then they just never left. Um, that's not cool, you know? After receiving these reports from Labinus, Caesar began to raise two more legions in Cisalpine Gaul, which brought his total up to eight. This Jesus. is something worth keeping in mind. When the Senate had assigned Caesar his provinces, they had assigned him four legions to go along with them. That's right. I, so I guess he raised two more before. I remember uh, he was raising them. And then uh, I guess now he's raised two more. So he's doubled his legions. And if I remember right, each legion, it was either five or 6,000 people. I think it was 5,000 at the time, so eighty or so 40,000 people. That's, uh, that's, that's a lot. Now Caesar had doubled this number without getting any approval from the Senate. This wow. wasn't an issue yet, but it would become one later. After his two legions were up and running, Caesar went north and met up with Labinus and the rest of his army. He was now in the command of around 35,000 to 40,000 men, after you factor in his earlier losses. When he got there, wow. he sent messages to some friendly tribes neighboring the Belgae, asking them to keep an eye on Belgae activities. They reported back, and each told the same story. The Belgae were mustering a massive army, so Caesar marched north in response. When he entered Belgae territory, the first tribe he encountered, called the Remi, fell all over themselves swearing that they never intended to join this anti-Roman confederacy. To prove their allegiance, <laughs> they told Caesar everything they knew. According to the Remi, the Belgae now consists... Before they uh, get into what they said, uh, do you think that, uh, do you think that that this first group actually had no intention of fighting the Romans, or do you think they were just scared and they caved? Instead of 290,000 people. Wow. We have no way of verifying this number, but we do know that the Belgae army was quite large with a lot of infighting between tribes. By the way, here's a handy little tip. These ancient sources have this nasty habit of trying to inflate the size of enemy armies by sneaking women and children into the counts. Here's the trick. Any society with a high mortality rate tends to be around 50% children. Also 50% female, obviously. So you take the given number, divide it by 4, take a little bit off to account for the elderly, and that gives you a very rough estimate as to the maximum number of fighting age males in that society. In this case, we get something like 70,000 men. That's a plausible number, and we have some anecdotal evidence to back it up. Okay. So anyway, back to the action. By now, the Belgae were on the move. 
The first target in their sights were the Remi, who were now passing information to the Romans. The Belgae advanced on a town called Bibrex, which was the capital of the Remi. Caesar responded and also moved towards Bibrex. As he approached the town, he came to a bridge across a river that the Romans called the Exana, and we now call the Aisne. Before crossing the river, Caesar had his men construct a small fort. He was now entering enemy territory, and he needed to protect this bridge. It was now his only link to friendly territory, and to his food shipments. He left a pretty large garrison there, six cohorts, almost 3,000 men. Wow. By this time, the Belgae had reached the Remy capital. The Remy sent a message to Caesar, saying that they wouldn't be able to hold out for very long. That night, Caesar had a bunch of skirmishers sneak into the Remy capital, under the cover of darkness. The next day, when the Belgae attempted to approach the gates, they were met with a barrage of Roman missiles, so intense that they were forced to pull back and reevaluate their plans. They definitely just didn't see that coming. I mean, it's uh, it's interesting because, uh, I mean, I don't know too much about uh, these armies up north, but uh, so far it seems like the Romans are using their superior strategy at the time to kind of take their smaller army and lose less men, not just throw your men at a wall, but, but uh, use the strategy to outsmart your enemy, you know? And I mean, that's what people have done for years, but... And it seems so simple, but uh, yet some people just, I mean, at one point, groups didn't do it, so it's got to be revolutionary at the time. At this point, they probably realized that there were now Romans fighting alongside the Remi. With this new information, they immediately abandoned their plan to take the Remi capital and marched towards the Roman army. Caesar recalled his skirmishers, but otherwise stayed put. He deployed up on a hill with the Exana River behind him and a bit of swampy, wet land in front of him. Hmm. This was a strong defensive position. He put his six experienced legions at the front, with his two green legions in reserve, just like he had done in the past. The Belgae arrived, and over the next several days, not much happened. That's something that's interesting, too, is uh, before this point, were there really that many that they put in reserve, or was that kind of a uh, new thing that the Romans did? I mean, who really started uh, by putting troops in reserve because at one point or another I think they actually mentioned in this series uh, whoever had the bigger army won basically but now that you have your different strategies of I'm not going to throw all my soldiers at once and things like that you know in case something happens uh, the reserves I mean they changed the battlefield there were some cavalry skirmishes but little else it was a standoff the Romans used this time to dig a long trench back from their line in order to prevent a Belgae attack on the flanks. The ditches stretched way back behind the Roman line and ended with small elevated wooden fortifications. Hmm. On these structures were a bunch of soldiers manning scorpions. If you don't know what a Roman scorpion is, picture a giant crossbow big enough to fire. Okay, I was just going to say, I think it's kind of like a ballista. So yeah, very similar bolts the size of pool cues. Wow. Even though the Belgae outnumbered the Romans by a lot, attacking through a swampy area and then uphill was pretty suicidal. Even worse, the Romans were digging in, meaning that the Belgae were losing their advantage by the day. They needed to force Caesar down off that hill. The easiest way to do this would be to cut off his food supply, and the easiest way to do that would be to take control of that bridge. But as we... Yeah... You'd think that the Romans would be building a bridge right now because they have their, uh, don't they have like engineers and things like that with them? Because um, they, they have basically core systems. They have their legion system. And uh, I thought that they were decent at setting up bridges. So We know Caesar had already thought of this, which is why he left almost 3,000 men to defend it in the first place. The Belgae formed a group of as many as 10,000 men to go and take the bridge. Their plan was this ford the river, swing around, and attack the Romans defending the bridge before anybody realized what was happening. Hmm. Then, if Caesar wanted to be stupid enough to try and retake the bridge with 10,000 Belgae on one side and 60,000 on the other, that was up to him. If not, he would be cut off, and they would just starve him out. Assembling 10,000 men and having them cross a river is no small thing, 
and Caesar could see sure. it all happening, clear as day from his hilltop perch. Caesar obviously didn't want to abandon the hilltop, since forcing Caesar down off the hilltop was the entire point of the exercise. So he left all of his infantry in place, but gathered together all of his cavalry and all of his skirmishers. Caesar then personally led them down off the hill, across the bridge, and to the Belgae crossing. He moved with exceptional speed, and when he got there, only a small number of Belgae had actually completed oh, wow. the crossing. So he's just basically able to kill those few and then slaughter the rest as they try to do their crossing. He charged this group with his cavalry, killing most and driving the rest off. Then, when his skirmishers caught up, they opened up on the Belgae still crossing the river, throwing javelins and slinging stones. The Belgae mi That kind of seems like a stupid plan. You'd think you'd go down at least a little farther. It may take a little longer, but at least get out of, you know, the line of sight of, uh, of your enemy crossing couldn't handle this heat. Some made it to the other side, at which time they were simply cut down by the cavalry waiting for them. Many were killed in the middle of the river, and the rest turned back. The Belgae plan failed miserably, and now they were in a weaker position than ever. There was a big meeting between the Belgae tribes. There was no one leader in command, and there was a lot of infighting. They had not come prepared to conduct a siege, or to spend several months playing cat and mouse with Caesar. Most of the tribes were unhappy. A vote was held, and they decided that they should each go home and resupply. They all agreed to mobilize again if the Romans ever went on the offensive. That night, the Belgae army simply walked off. Caesar had a hard time believing that this wasn't a trap, so he sent Labinus out with three legions and all of the cavalry to investigate. While they were gone, Caesar. Oh, I wonder if they're going to see that as an advance. Continued to hold their hilltop position, just in case. Labinus stumbled upon some of the Belgae and attacked. To his surprise, it wasn't a trap, and they didn't put up much of a fight. Labinus returned to Caesar and told him that it was exactly what it looked like. The Belgae had gone home. Let's not forget that the hmm. entire reason Caesar had come to Belgae territory in the first place was to force the Belgae to stand down. They had. Mission accomplished. Caesar could have taken this opportunity to return south, but he didn't. No. His campaign against the Belgae would only continue. If you're eager to know what he did next, you're in luck, because I already made that video, right here. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love uh, love this channel. I really do. Uh, so that's going to be tomorrow's, or not tomorrow, we're taking a one day break uh, because I have another video that I want to watch. Uh, so that will be on two days from now. Um, what do you guys think of that? I mean, it's, it's interesting to watch Caesar's battles kind of coming out. Um, that one definitely didn't end like I planned it, or like I thought it would. You know, uh, it just kind of fell apart. They gave up. And uh, Caesar is not going to stand down. I think he's just going to keep on pushing up. So uh, so we'll, we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, anyway, I uh, hope you guys like that one. Uh, Till next time, this is Ace's Eye. And I'm out.